Hi there, my name is David Logan, the IT geek, taking the complexity out of technology, computer systems for the home worker. This week I'm joined by Wally Nicol. Wally, how are you and where are you? Hello David, I'm very well, thank you. I'm Wally Nicol, talking to you now from Loans, outside Troon, South Ayrshire, Scotland, UK. Fantastic. Well, I, we're talking about your favourite subject and we're talking about how to manage anxiety and stress. Going back to video number three, if you remember, we talked about that. Can you Absolutely, give us a quick David. review of what we've talked about in previous weeks? Um, in previous weeks, I talked about uh, managing stress and anxiety using a varied uh, number of techniques or whatever you want to call them. We started off very low key with talking to someone you know and trust. We then went on to talk about uh, exercise and breathing exercises and mindfulness and meditation. And I'd now like to move on to hypnotherapy. That's interesting. So how does hypnotherapy, how can we manage anxiety and stress through hypnotherapy? Can you tell me more? Absolutely, David. It's a very good question. Before we uh, I go into that, people might wonder what is hypno hypnosis and what is hypnotherapy. If I can say that hypnosis is uh, a means where you can put a person into a state of very deep relaxation, a deep sense of calm, uh, which affords them the ability to go inside themselves to an unconscious level. And that allows various things to happen, which I'll go into later. We can almost say that hypnotherapy is the therapeutic use of hypnosis. We can describe it as hypnosis being a tool and hypnotherapy as the usage of that tool. So you've got tool and uses. So news has been like a system. Would that be correct? It's kind of like that. Now, if I say that hypnosis is equivalent to being in a trance-like state, and trans sounds a wee bit kind of uh, woo-woo, but it's astonishing that um, we are very often in a trans-like state. And I'll give you an example, or a couple of examples. How often have we jumped in our car to drive from home to work? And we do it automatically, oh. without thinking, really. And we get to work, we get out of the car, and we think, I don't recall actually many aspects of that journey. Because we've been in a trans-like state, we're doing it automatically. It's the same as if we're watching a movie that we're engrossed in or reading a book that we're engrossed in. We go into a kind of trance. So if someone comes into the room and asks you if you want a cup of tea, you probably won't hear them because you're so engrossed in what you're doing. And hypnosis is just a, a, a deeper version of that. So I, I can remember briefly you're saying something about like conscious, but is this like the difference between subconscious and conscious? Is that levels? It is indeed. Without going into it too deeply, and I use the word deeply advisedly because um, hypnosis is a, just a deep trance. At an unconscious level, um, we we know we basically know everything we've done, every experience we've ever had, because it's it's stored inside our unconscious. It's almost like having a big filing cabinet or a big computer hard drive, where all our memories and everything else is stored in there, right? Good and bad things, and very often we forget they're there. So. The use of hypnosis or hypnotherapy, the therapeutic use of hypnosis, allows us to go back inside to that unconscious and find the file or the folder or the thing or whatever it is we're looking for, which is contained in the filing cabinet or in our uh, hard drive, so to speak. Okay, so that's the subconscious and conscious levels. Okay, good, good, good. So hypnotherapy, it's just putting into that state of mind. Is that, is that right? You, it's been in the yeah, subconscious. It puts you into a very deep state of relaxation, right? Where, if you like, the world around about you, while still there, right, becomes less important and you can focus more deeply inside yourself uh, on any number, of, uh, any number of levels and any number of matters. For example, it's very useful for stress and anxiety because that deep sense of calm and relaxation allows you to go inside and decide, I don't need to be stressed about this or anxious about this. And the, the beauty of it is that 
after a hypnotherapy session, you will inevitably find yourself much more relaxed and much calmer. And that's one of the very basic benefits of hypnotherapy. We can then go on to look at um, its usage in things like habits, addictions, fears, phobias, um, and various other things. But stress and anxiety is absolutely um, a great uh, area where hypnosis comes into its own. So, sorry, the pen is starting to drop here. So, hypnosis is basically di redirecting your mind, your brain, the way you're thinking. Is that correct? Is that? It, that's not a bad way of putting it, right? But we're, we're sitting here consciously in our chairs um, talking together. Right? We're doing this consciously, but there's all sorts of other things going on unconsciously. For example, we don't have to consciously think about breathing or we don't have to consciously think, I better make sure my heart keeps beating. These things are done unconsciously for us, right? It's just the way things are. Um, so at that unconscious level, we don't have to think about it. Um, when we have, I don't like using the word problems or things or, or issues or whatever, when something's bothering us, right, um, it can be at a conscious level, but the actual underlying cause is unconscious. And once we can tap into the unconscious, we're in a better position to remedy, address, or resolve whatever that thing is that's bothering us. Great, fantastic, good. So I think we don't need to go much deeper. If we need to go any deeper, people can contact you. Is that a fair statement? Yes, absolutely can contact me. Um, I have had hypnotherapy uh, myself, um, which I can describe to people, and that's the reason I know that it, know, I know that it works. Otherwise, I may be like very many people who are associated with stage hypnosis, who are talented uh, hypnotists, not hypnotherapists, hypnotists, um, mm -hmm. get a member of the audience to, to run about and do things which ordinarily they wouldn't do, but have been, if you like, persuaded through hypnosis to do. Hypnotherapy is different from that. It's a use of hypnosis in a therapeutic manner to achieve a desired outcome. It might be stopping smoking, it might be reducing your stress and anxiety, it could be fear of flying. It could be all number of things. But the use of this tool, hypnosis, in a therapeutic context allows us to resolve whatever the problem is or whatever you're trying to get over. So without going becoming too technical, if you excuse the, excuse the pun, too technical and too psychological, um, that's a very brief overview yeah. of hypnosis and hypnotherapy. It's just of what it's good for. So uh -huh. anyone can contact me and uh, I can explain further. And we can maybe even have a wee session and I'll show you how good it is. I hope that's been helpful. If you have any questions, please don't hesitate to get in touch with me um, through any form, social media, emails, whatever. Thank you very much for listening. Fantastic, Wally. Thank you for your input and experience this week. Can you believe this is video number 11 now, 11 weeks. <laughs> We've been into lockdown in Scotland. Unbelievable. And people are still watching. That's <laughs> great news. Great, great. But we want more people to watch our videos. We want more people to subscribe to YouTube. So if you're watching this on YouTube, press the button down here to subscribe. So my name is David Logan. If you want to know any more, contact either of us. If you're in either of our networks, Facebook, LinkedIn, YouTube, or even on the website. Give us a shout. So my name is David Logan, Logan IT, talking here from Annan, Southwest Scotland, United Kingdom. Goodbye from me and goodbye from... Goodbye from William Nicol, the Tainted Dinosaur. <laughs>